Dear friends, we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We journey and talk together through the unknown of stay-at-home orders and invisible COVID-19, in addition to realities of racism and fires and storms, plus our regular life cares and challenges. A little more than usual, we are reminded that the Lord is here as we grow alongside of us, teaching us to live in the divine name. We are prisoners of hope. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh, righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Old Testament from Zephaniah, Psalm 90, the New Testament from 1 Thessalonians, and from Matthew chapter 25. Thank you. 
I'm getting there. Okay. Our first lesson is is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7 and 12 to 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and has consecrated those who are called. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacency on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will the Lord do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. Next reading is from Psalm 90. It's from verses and verses 1 to 12. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth was born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly, like the grass. In the morning, <clears throat> it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger, we are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of your life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? <clears throat> so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Here ends the psalm. The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and it begins the first verse. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do know, you do no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, when they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us for wrath, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us pray. 
Merciful God of power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to kindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world. A people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel for today. Glory to you, O Lord. It comes from Matthew 25, beginning at verse 14. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and he dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said, said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? And you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take that talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. Or to those, or to all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for the worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, um, last night I shared um, uh, a little bit of my past uh, with some people. Uh, it's, it came in a bag of some seeds. So those of you who are on the phone, I'm, I'm holding up a bag of seeds and it's just a reminder of uh, something that I discovered this past uh, uh, late spring. Uh, I was cleaning out a closet um, at our house here and I came across a, packet, a bunch of packets of seeds. They were flower seeds. Um, and I had gathered them, uh, I think, on some trips we had made uh, to various places. Maybe I even bought them locally at the, one of the stores, thinking that I would plant them and, and uh, 
uh, spruce up our flower beds around the house and and because uh, we love them. Some of them were sunflower seeds, some were lupines from Maine, uh, some were uh, zinnias. And so, uh, but I, what I discovered is that they had been sitting on a shelf in this closet for, I don't know, four or five years. Uh, maybe you kind of do the same thing at times. You get something that you know, think, this is a, this is going to be great. And you kind of put it on a shelf and you don't use it. Well, I thought that this year would be the year. So after I found the, the seeds and uh, we uh, cleared out a space in our yard, we decided just to have a whole area that would just be assortment of flowers. And so this year, uh, after uh, taking down what I thought I would use a, five years ago, uh, I finally planted them in the ground. And lo and behold, come late July, August, uh, we had sunflowers that were coming up and zinnias and lupines. Uh, and uh, what a great discovery it was. And, but it reminded me that sometimes we take the things uh, that can bring so much beauty uh, to the earth and to the world, and we just kind of place it up on a shelf. Uh, it doesn't just have to be seeds. It can be sometimes good intentions that we have of, of something we're going to do, um, just reaching out to people or, or whatever it be. I'll do that tomorrow, and all of a sudden it's a week later or a month later. Um, so my mini message today is let's, let's pull those things, those, those great intentions that we have off the shelf, and let's plant them and just see what difference it could make uh, in the world around us in everything we do. Uh, amen to that. Okay, it is time for the sermon. <laughs> I think last night we did the hymn before, but uh, tonight we're gonna, today we're going to do the sermon uh, uh, before the hymn. Uh, this is an interesting uh, parable from uh, Jesus uh, 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 today. Uh, it comes uh, towards the end of Matthew's gospel, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's, it has a lot of things to it uh, that we kind of have to wade through, but I, I wanted to focus on just two things that caught my attention uh, about the parable. Uh, the first thing I'd like to share with you uh, is um, uh, one of the verses that says, each according to his ability, in uh, verse 15. Um, a, a number of years ago, I was down in Waco, Texas at a conference, and I had a friend down there from one of the congregations I served, and uh, he was, he's a rocket scientist. Um, so he and I had a lot in common. Uh, that's a, that's a joke guys. Uh, so anyway, uh, when I was down there, uh, he invited me to come and to, uh, to, uh, take a tour of SpaceX, uh, down around Waco, Texas. And so, uh, one day when I had some free time in the afternoon, I went over and met with Todd and, and he began to take me on this tour of the SpaceX plant, uh, uh, down in Waco. There was big rocket engines and all kinds of things we were walking by. And, and uh, about 10 minutes into uh, the tour, uh, my eyes began to glaze over and I had not a clue what he was talking about anymore. Uh, it was beyond my ability uh, to understand him anymore. I, I love the tour and, and everything about it, but it didn't take long for me to somehow uh, not get it. And so it, it is, there is something about this idea of understanding what's within our wheelhouse. What are our abilities? Uh, you know, we can identify interests that we have, things we're good at, uh, the, the gifts that we're gifted with that we can use throughout our life. Um, and so, this verse, this beginning of this verse 15, each according to his ability. In short, I think the, uh, the master uh, assessed the ability of each of his servants and gave what he thought each one of them could handle. Now, 
that's pretty important in the passage. He just doesn't uh, willy-nilly give everybody the same. He understands there's a certain amount that each one can handle. And so he goes about doing that. Uh, and so find out that the parable is not only about the abilities that they have, but that, that also the, the master is willing to gift his, his talents to them when he goes away. It, the passage doesn't say there was any strings attached to them, that basically they could do whatever they wanted to do with these talents. The passage also uh, is in uh, a group of, of uh, parables that starts at the beginning of chapter 25. And the very beginning of chapter 25 says this, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. So I think we need to understand when, when that's a setup at the beginning of chapter 25, that this parable is trying to teach us something about what the kingdom of heaven is like. And so one of those pieces is about our own abilities. What do we possibly could we do to offer to be part of the kingdom? Uh, and so those are important things to understand. The, un the, the master understood the abilities of those servants, and he gave a proportionate amount of the same gift to each of them. Uh, one of the things that uh, I always like to think about is uh, what's, uh, what are they given? Uh, you know, what does this mean to us now? And so we begin really quickly to understand that if we use pre-inflationary kinds of tools to figure out what he gave, to the first servant, he actually gave equivalent to today's inflation, about $1.2 million. This is not chump change here. This is, this is significant gift giving by the owner to the servants. The, the second one, he gave uh, uh, two talents, which is equivalent to about $400,000. And then to the third one, he gave that one talent, which is about $200,000 with inflation. The, the first uh, servant went, the one that got to 1.2 million, he went and he doubled it. So, so look out, uh, Mr. Uh, Baos. <laughs> uh, that this guy has, he had something on the ball. He went and he traded and he could do uh, some really good things with what he was given. The second one did the same thing. He doubled uh, what he was given. But that third servant, that third servant, um, he was overcome. He was overcome by fear. And so that, that giftedness that he was given by the owner, uh, he just took that and he, we're told he dug, he dug a hole and put it in the ground. Kind of our equivalent to, to taking a gift and putting it in a can and, and setting it up on a shelf, waiting uh, for the owner to come back. Uh, just fear driven. So this first part of this idea of understanding our abilities uh, is I think an important one. Uh, what are the abilities that, that uh, are given to us? Uh, what, what do we have that we can offer out into the world? Uh, perhaps the work that we do or did, uh, or even in this time when we seem to be in, under so much stress about the world around us right now, maybe it's just having the ability to bring comfort to someone with words or to listen to someone who is so, so stressed out by what's happening, to offer some kind of ability uh, to them to, to understand who they are in this kingdom of God. The, the second part that I wanted to draw out of this passage for today was this idea uh, that uh, what happens with the servants, that they can either be motivated by the gift that they're given by the owner, or they can be paralyzed by it. And we can see that kind of playing out in, in the passage itself. We, we see real quickly that those first two servants, they go gangbusters and, and they take the gift that they're given. And it does not paralyze them. It motivates them uh, to uh, uh, go out and do something good with what the owner has given them. But that third one, that, that third servant, he couldn't see the, what was given as a generous gift by the owner. 
He could only be paralyzed by the fear of maybe messing up or, or not doing things. Oh, sorry. And so uh, we, we, find, we find it very interesting, at least I do, in the passage that, that when the owner comes back, what he, what he offers is for those who have somehow understood their ability and what they could do with what is given to them, he says, enter into my joy. Just think about that, to take the things that we are good at, to take our abilities, whatever they would be in, in your life, in my life, and to somehow extend them out into the world as the owner would want us to do. And then we understand that we can be invited into the joy. Remember back at 25.1, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Then all of a sudden we're invited into that joy of what the owner has offered. I remember years ago uh, when I was serving in Reading at Hope Lutheran Church. Uh, before I got there, there was a, uh, a parishioner who died right before, about a couple months before I, I got there. And she lived in a very small row house uh, just down the street from the church. And, and when I got there and all the, the death settled, uh, she had given to the church um, just about a, a just shy of a million dollars. Wow! And um, so we had this, uh, you know, we, we had to figure out what to do, and uh, and so what we decided is that we would set up uh, an endowment and uh, that we would only use the interest off the money uh, to do uh, mission work in our neighborhood and in the world at large. Within 10 years, we, the, we, the, the money doubled in that account, and we were able to do some spectacular things uh, with that uh, money that was given by this little woman who, who lived in this little row house that you would never have guessed could gift this. Uh, she gave us the ability as the church to do incredible things in the neighborhood, in the city, and also way beyond ourselves in the world. So what do we do? You and I, what do we do with the abilities that we have? Can, can we name them? Can we look at ourselves and say, this is an ability that I have that I can use in the world today. It can be simple things. It can be complex things like my, like my friend Todd, who is a rocket scientist. But I think, and I truly believe that each and every one of us are gifted with the ability that God gives us to do something good in the world and for the people around us in the created order. So what do we do? What, what, what happens when someone new walks into the church doors or comes on to a Zoom service like this? Uh, do we recognize them and say, oh, we're so glad you're here, but do we miss their abilities? Do we ask them what they're good at? Do we ask them what can they bring to not the church, but to the kingdom and our progress in the mission of God? And I think when we ask that, we become stronger and we are always, always, always invited into the joy of the master. Amen. Amen. Now we'll have a hymn. <laughs> Thank 
There you go, boy. Dear friends, let us uh, confess our faith uh, through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, uh, the Almighty, the creator creator. Of the I believe, I believe in, Jesus in Jesus Christ, God's God, only Son, our, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. Was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. Descended he descended to the dead. To the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Will come the judge, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us, uh, let us prepare our hearts for, for prayer at this time. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, let us pray to see God's power in the church and in the world. Responding to each petition with the words, hear us and help us. We pray, O oh God, for the church in our community and throughout the world. Raise up and sustain believers who will use their talents to assist with worship and to lead congregational ministries in difficult times. Grant an extra measure of your spirit to our synod and its council, for the staff and council, the movers and shakers. Protect your whole people with the armor of your word. O oh God, you are the temple of your people. Hear yeah. us and help us. We pray for the earth. During this autumn season, give to plants and wild animals a time of rest. Help us practice sustainable farming and sustainable daily living. Keep the coronavirus and other pathogens away from the animals that we farm. Oh God, you are the maker of the heavens and the earth. Hear, Hear us. us and help us. For all the, genera all the nations we pray, bring an end to war and terrorism. Especially today we name those fought by the U.S. and Ethiopia cultivate a worldwide spirit of cooperation that will seek just international agreements and a shared human rights. Rescue humankind from the, the worship of wealth and give a homeland to migrants and refugees. Oh God, you are the haven we seek. Hear us. Yes, and help us. We pray for our country, for the United States. 
quell attempts at violence and restore national goodwill and prejudice of all kinds and lead us into a unity that embraces diversity. Comfort those who live in fear of the future. Bless all newly elected officials, especially president and vice president elect Joe and Kamala with a passion for justice and a commitment to honesty. Oh God, you are our mighty fortress. You are help us. We pray for all who are in need. Visit with health and good medical care all the sick, especially the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. Prepare a vaccine to save our world from the virus. Give food and employment and housing to the countless who are struggling to live. We pray especially this day for all preparing for surgery and those healing from surgery, hospitalization, for Pauline and Silky, for Bob and Norman, for Dewey and Jennifer, for Samantha, for Bill M, for Baldwin, for Tucker, for Karen, for Alos, for Jerry, and for Hong. We pray for those with chronic conditions. We lift before you Jim, Holly, Kathleen S, June E, Darlin H, Dorothy, Barbara and Mike S, Linda W, for Brian. For those on hospice and comfort care. We pray this day for Evelyn, for Anna Kay, and all those that we name in our hearts. We lift before you today. The bridge, the bridge, Bridges family. Surround them, Lord, as they uh, struggle uh, in the aftermath of a house fire. May they find comfort in those around them help where it's needed, guide them in this time. We pray for Barbara and Ben, for Sandy S, for Shirley H, for June B, for Kelly R, for Doris S. We pray for Gretchen and Jerry, for Kathy M, for Nick P, for Kristen. We lift before you Elaine, Teresa, Bob, Shirley, Robert R, Anna, and Duke. We pray this day for Jay. We lift before you Matthew and Teresa, Chuck and Carol, Marsha Rose, Anne and Greg S. We lift before you Mary S and for Mick W, Bob U, Darrell R, Sandy B and the leaders and people of churches in transition. We pray your spirit to move over them, over Advent and Calvary and Trinity. Oh God, you are our physician. You are our nurse. Hear us and help us. We pray this day for, for many of us what the ancient prophet said is now true. These are days of distress and anguish, and we beg you to listen to the prayers of our hearts. We remember before you all the saints who have died, who lived and died in the faith. We especially remember this day, John P., Michael Z., and Devin M., We also remember this day, Michael W. on his birthday and all creatures great and small. And the end time bring us all into your peace. Oh God, you are the light perpetual. Hear us and help us. <coughs> Receive our thanks, dear Lord. Your divine healing, which like birth, can be a painful process of ongoing healing from racism, from injustice, 
from surgeries, from emotional, spiritual, and physical wounds. For siblings in the faith, including Zion Spee's Evangelical Reformed Church, for all who serve in the armed services and veterans, for essential workers in factories, municipal services, first responders, health care, teachers, aides, superintendents, and school district administrators. We pray for the safety of Terry F. and Dave N. We pray that you would be with them after their collision with a deer. Oh God, you provide an abundance for every need that we have. Hear our, pray our praise and thanks, oh God. We give you thanks, Lord, for the celebrations of life that surround us. For Jeffrey Kenny preparing for baptism. For AJ and Sophia's upcoming marriage. We pray that your spirit would surround our elected new bishop. For Reverend Krista Forrest and his wife Allison and son Bo. We also pray, Lord, for Bishop Sam Zeiser and Linda as they look to a new time in their life. We give thanks for the marriages of Barry and Danny, for Alicia and Bryant. Surround them in their, their journey together. Oh, loving and providing God, we do praise you. We praise you in the midst of fear and struggle. Incarnate in Christ, you bring us through as witnesses of grace. We praise you that you give us diverse languages, ethnicity, culture, and backgrounds. We are unified, not uniform. We praise you for your Holy Spirit that nourishes us through life together. Dear Lord, receive these prayers, and in your gracious mercy, grant your strength to our neediness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, let us pray together the Lord, the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the source of glory. God, the word of life. God, the spirit of truth. Bless you all now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. final hymn this day. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Hey, thanks, Roy, for that great hymn. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Sunday school today. Yeah. Um, 